Hello. Um, today, uh, I thought I'd just kind of do something a little different. Uh, just talk about why I like uh, films and movies. It's the 50th episode of uh, this series, so uh, why not? Um, uh, I'm sure, as many of you know, I... One of the first films I ever saw was Star Wars. I saw the original trilogy in the prequels. The prequels I saw on the big screen. And that left a huge impression on me. Um, another thing is that uh, my family really just loved movies. They just loved watching variety of films of various genres. Um, and I kind of adopted that, and I guess even more so, because um, I've mentioned how in some other videos, uh, well, one-off videos, not pertaining to any kind of series, that uh, I've done uh, some film work. You know, I've acted and worked on some projects with a local film company, um, you know, uh, working on a film uh, at the moment. It's a horror film called The Harvest. Um, I made a video about uh, the announcement of a trailer, in which I left a link in the description of that video. Um, and yeah, I just enjoy movies, honestly. I mean, it used to be films sort of like Star Wars. There's a lot of action. There's something, you know, Batman, um, Jaws, <clears throat> with suspense and such, and v various uh, kinds of films, uh, but as I got older, I, I taste the movies broad more. Um, I, you know, I enjoy a, a multitude of films, um, some award-winning, or that would be Say, or at least be nominated for awards. I'm talking about films like uh, Capote and Foxcatcher. And uh, I love and enjoy those films. Um, uh, and certain actors, you know, I just love watching specific actors. Gary Oldman, I've talked about, uh, did a uh, more recently, because of you know Darkest Hour, loved him in that film. I just love his acting. He's fantastic and is just phenomenal. I never see Gary Oldman ever in his role, even when he looks like himself. I'm so used to him being looking different, as well as sounding. Because sometimes he might look like himself, but doesn't sound like himself at all. You know. He doesn't have that normal, his normal English accent. He's also, he even went on record once saying that he actually lost his <laughs> English accent, his normal accent, because, I mean, aside from living in America for 20 plus years, um, he played so many American characters that it got hard that he couldn't, he couldn't, he didn't have it anymore. He had to get a, a, a dialect coach to get it back. Uh, another actor I really enjoy is uh, Christian Bale. Uh, you know, he was Batman. He was in The Fighter. Um, Big Short. American Psycho. You know, Machinist. American Hustle. He's in so many great films. Uh, he's done so many great performances. Uh, you know, like Oldman, I've yet to see a bad performance uh, by him. I mean, I'm sure maybe they've done some bad movies. I mean, another actor I really admire and like, uh, Ewan McGregor, um, which in Star Wars. Uh, I really like him as Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, but there, you know, there are actors who just, you know, they don't... Uh, they don't really exactly, you know, 
they act so well, they're always great at acting, but, you know, they kind of just, sometimes they make, maybe, you know, great films, and most of the time, I feel they do, but then, you know, those, like, three I mentioned and others, you can put out there, uh, Morgan Freeman, you could say, Michael Caine, um, Mark Hamill, so the Star Wars people more um, actors in it. Uh, Tim Roth, um, Samuel Jackson, Denzel Washington. I mean, the, these are uh, and actresses like uh, Ryan Hathaway, Michelle Williams. Iola Davis, yeah, that's it. Octavia Spencer. I mean, there's so many great actors and actresses that, you know, they make so many great films. And they can, you know, they can do a film where they're great in. Like, I like their acting is fantastic. Uh, it could be like two thumbs up, ten out of ten performance, all that good jazz. But, you know, the movie itself is bad. And, you know, growing up, uh, just watching so many movies, being so interested in the process of making films, you know, I've said I always want to be an actor, I want to be a filmmaker, and you know, I'm helping out with films, helping making local, locally made films. Um, uh, I've written some stuff, um, and I've talked to people about. Uh, making and they're enthused it, with you know the plots the stuff I talked about and such they're interested and they just seem to be interested in what I have to offer um, in terms of a story and the film and hopefully that will translate to uh, you know well for audiences one thing I've seen you know as a film fan is a lot of people want directors who get their vision out there. Um, they don't want uh, studio vision or interference by the studio. They don't want directors essentially just being hired to do a job. And uh, that's really it. They don't want that and that's understandable. And I think if a director makes a movie for themselves as much as for the audience that's even better because like let's just say this maybe you didn't enjoy the film maybe you love the direction or the story or whatever something in the movie big or small you know if it was small enough or whatever it is small little detail or something might just gnaw at you and you're just kind of annoying or annoyed with it. Perhaps you can't really exactly uh, put your finger on it, but you know, you just you just know there's something there that you just weren't fond of. But if you know the director gave it their all and they did the best of their ability, at the very least, hopefully, you can at least at least the audience will be able to respect. The movie, they might not have enjoyed it, or perhaps not as much as maybe some other films of that director, or actor, you know, or whoever, writer, producer, whatever, you know, the big name, or they're up and coming and are making a name for themselves, and you need department in the film <laughs> industry, uh, you know, hey, it could be great, could be good. But, you know, there's just something there that's just like, you know, just don't like it as much. But the director, you can tell they put their, put, gave it their all, put all they had into it, and made the best film they could, but perhaps it just didn't either hit home with people or just fell short. Like it was liked, but not as much as 
one would expect. Um, when I make my movies, I hope very similar. Uh, a kind of thing where maybe people don't really enjoy a film I make. Um, but hopefully if they see the what I tried to do, or what I do was doing, maybe they'll find some sort of appreciation. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Um, and I see that with various filmmakers and actors. Like, they gave up their all. Might not be fond of this particular film, but I can tell they really genuinely wanted to make this the best they could. And they did the best they best with what they had, or just they gave up their all, or whatever it is. Maybe there's various circumstances that happened as to why perhaps performance or the film, the way the film was made during the filming process or whatever, and it just doesn't necessarily come across as as good as what said person, actor, actress, director has made before, or perhaps in a sense, you know. Uh, maybe, you know, it just you know, it was good, but not as good. Uh, I hope to have something like that, uh, and I doubt I'm never going to be a huge household. I mean, I'm not saying I doubt that because I doubt my own abilities. I don't, but, you know, the movie industry is, you know, very competitive. Same with television. And can I, can I and other people who would like to be in this, in that industry, be part of that world that we love? I love film. Yes, it's possible. And it is possible to achieve various degrees of success, especially with things like YouTube. Um, also, maybe even other video platforms, like uh, people say, like uh, BitChute and other things, you know, if you build a good enough presence on the internet, you could create something quite amazing um, uh, for yourself and just to, and to others, you know, not just to yourself, but to entertain people. Um, and, uh, You know, that's another reason I love film, is just seeing the directors and the actors give it their all and talk about a certain project and, you know, when they really believe in a movie, you can see that passion that they have. And you just hope when you see it, it translates to that on screen. And if it hits, it's, it's, it's just, it's all the more, you know, you just... Was love it even more than perhaps you would have before you kind of heard some stuff from the actors and or director. Um, uh, but even if it isn't as good as you had hoped it would be, um, hopefully it's like you, know, you saw the potential, you saw it. You know, understand what everybody involved was making. They, you understood what they are trying to make and they are trying to do. Gave up their all, just didn't, you know, just didn't go all the way like they hoped it would. Um, with either an audience as a whole or just with perhaps you. Um, uh, I, yeah, again, uh, you know, these are just some stuff that is why I love film. I love watching actors. I love watching the director's techniques. I love interviews. I love documentaries and the making of and this and that. I even listen to commentaries on some of my favorite movies. Um, if commentaries are available. Sometimes there are no commentaries. Um, you know, that's fine. Uh, but, you know, it's just I'm just so interested in so many aspects of uh, film that, you know, I just really, when I make my own thing, I want to be in as involved as much as possible.
And I understand that could be either a good thing and a bad thing. Yeah, it could be a good and a bad thing. You know, I guess it could be good or bad, but, you know, there's good intentions. Uh, whether the final product is perceived as bad is, a, is something else. Um, I mean, critics, you know, they're going to, they're, they're critics, they're supposed to critique and stuff like that, and sometimes, you know, uh, critics don't, you know, they don't always know uh, the best, but uh, many times the audiences say, this film is great, the critics are wrong, uh, but, you know, it all depends on who watches the film and what they think of it. And perhaps they might watch an interview or two with those who made said film. Um, their tune may change or it may not. Or perhaps they might, uh, at the very least, respect the movie a bit more. Like people did their best and in stuff like movies that's all you can do is just do the best you can um, in particular for the material you have um, if the material you have is great like a script all the more uh, you know this seems likely to succeed if the script seems like it's not good um, uh, it's harder then. Um, again, like with Star Wars, I love Star Wars. I love the first six films in particular. Um, George Lucas, yes, he said he's not the best at writing dialogue, um, but when you know what a space opera is and you know what the, how it's supposed to be like very melodramatic with acting and dialogue being more theatrical and not as Say, not as how you or I would talk. You kind of, you get it. It's a very interesting and specific uh, uh, kind of storytelling, um, which made Star Wars very unique. It stood out amongst just your normal science fiction, fantasy uh, uh, films, because it is science fiction and it is fantasy. Space opera, uh, essentially all those things in one, and it's it's so well made, so well written. And Star Wars really is what made me want to make movies. Watching Mark Hamill, Lyle Guinness, Harrison Ford, Ewan McGregor, um, Liam Neeson, Samuel L. Jackson, uh, and uh, Gary. The voices of James Earl Jones and, uh, you know, Frank Oz really wanted, made me want to act. And then watching the making of Star Wars, all of the, the six films, the making of and how all that was done, it made me not only want to act, but write, direct, and produce films. And, you know, can't say that'll happen soon. I mean, it'd be nice if it did, but I can't, you know, guarantee or promise you that, because life's unpredictable. You never know what's going to happen. Um, but, you know, there are people with some of the stuff I've, uh, who know of the stuff I've written, who enjoy, or at the very least are very intrigued and interested in what I have made and shared with a few of them, and they seem to very be very ecstatic and would like to help out, so that seems to be uh, getting a step in the right direction. Um, but yeah, as I've said it already, you know, I just love film, I love essentially all the aspects of film. And uh, 
working on this horror film, uh, and it's a very interesting movie, I think. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I'm, I'm helping with it. You know, I'm in it. I've helped behind the scenes and move lights and done this or that, done whatever is needed to help get this film by these guys who, you know, when you work with them, they treat you like family. Uh, that's another thing, you know. When you see so many of these filmmakers, they have like a family. Christopher Nolan recasts like Christian Bale, Michael Caine, Killian Murphy, Tom Hardy. Uh, you know, they all work well together. The same people in front of the camera and behind the camera. And even behind the scenes, like Hans Zimmer, you know, uh, George Lucas, and Steven Spielberg work with John Williams. I mean, it's it's so you know, there's so many people that keep collaborating over and over. Like you keep recasting people, you keep reusing uh, people who were who worked behind the scenes or did music or all of those things. And that's another thing I love about film is like, you have, there's, like, there's people that just have so many people come together and continue working on various projects. And there's a sense of family when you work with them, with, with those people. And I get that kind of sense with these guys. I've worked with them for some years now and it's like it's like the sense of family. You can just shoot the bowl here and there, and it's like it's just fun. It's just a fun environment, and uh, that's another thing I like about it. it, it, it it's hard work, yeah. There's a lot of hard work and hardship into the uh, making of any movie, but you know when you believe in it and you around people who believe in it and are enthused with what you're making, it's going to be, at the very least, uh, I think people, the audience, will be able to appreciate that everyone involved was ecstatic and enthused with what was made. And they can, uh, and at the very least, people can hopefully appreciate uh, films like that. Even if perhaps some films just weren't what they wanted or expected and liked as much. But if you get the sense that all these people loved what they were doing, believed in what they were doing, loved the process of it and the script, story and all that, and the people involved, I think that's, a, that's also important to me. On top of just the film being good, you know, that's a big thing, you know, movie has to be good. Um, if it's not good, then that's unfortunate. Uh, but if it isn't good, yet you can, you sense people were ecstatic with the film. They enjoyed what they were doing. Then say, you know, it was a success, because then, you know, there is appreciation out of a movie, or even a TV show, there's appreciation for what the work, the hard work went into it, what people were all involved with, were aiming to do, whether it hit or missed, you know, people can see that uh, in one way. It is, a success. it is a success. But, you know, you just hope for the best. You hope every project you do is a success. And, uh, I hope this film I'm working on is a success, and I hope whatever else I work on, whether with myself or with those guys that I work with, I hope it's all a success. I really do. Uh, there's talented people involved with this film, uh, The Harvest. 
and uh, I just would like to see talent be shown and people to see. Um, like I enjoy the films I do uh, that I do love from the filmmakers and the actors and people that I enjoy watching. You know. That's what I really hope for. Uh, sometimes time uh, it takes time for some things to grow and be appreciated. That's it's like both good and bad. Uh, when you're really up and coming, it's kind of bad. It could be kind of bad. It's like wish this success that this film that I did way back when. That's being successful now. Wish had best success back then. Um, yet, that happens. Um, for better or worse, it happens. Uh, if that ever happens to me, uh, well, hey, at least I made something that people enjoyed. Uh, I think that's really what's important. Uh, and if it made money, you know. It's even better because then it's like, well, hey, recuperated what went into this film. So, there you go. Uh, uh, there's a money aspect to it, but uh, I myself of my movies that I'd want to make. Yeah, I'd hope they would. They would make. It would pick uh, a decent amount of money, but if my movies become like a cult film, cult classic, classics, you know, it made more money overall, as or as time went on, overall in the long run, then hey, at least then people, you know, people enjoyed it, uh, even if it was later. Uh, When people can just come together and just make something that for two, two and a half hours, or three hours, just sit down and just watch something, and just get sucked into this world, whether based on a historical event or real-life person, or just entirely fictional, if something you make, that I made, or somebody made uh, was, was is well liked and was able to be and you know the viewer was able to be sucked in uh, for a few hours and I'd say you know mission accomplished you know you entertain some uh, a good some people hopefully a good number of people uh, and it, and as a good nice bonus, I made uh, a decent amount of money in the process. You know, it did something that people wanted to go see over and over again. I think box office should really reflect that, but then some films like Transformers and such that aren't that great keep making money over and over. I don't know. Uh, you, know you don't need to make films with a political or social statement. Just make movies that are just, uh, just entertaining. You entertain people for a few hours. Hey, you did you did so you did something right because in the entertainment world if you're you know the you're to entertain. You don't entertain you essentially failed. But if you did entertain, you succeeded. Uh, and that's really all I have to say. It kind of went longer than I thought it would. Um, that what else is new with me. Um, it's about 30 minutes now. So, uh, yeah. This, that's why I like film. Sorry if I kind of rambled, but 
there's a lot I could keep going on, but you know, it might not be as coherent. So it's a good place to stop. And until next time, I'll see you all later. Until next time, peace.